I just got done teaching this old patriotic song, Grand Old Flag, on the mandolin. And I love teaching songs that are outside the bluegrass box, but on bluegrass instruments, because it makes us think a little differently about what we're playing, maybe reaching for melody notes that we're not used to reaching for um, in a particular key. And I also faced a challenge of how to make the melody robust whenever it's repetitive and whenever it's slow, but you also have to keep the melody in the forefront so that you don't lose the audience. And that's what happens with Grand Old Flag. There's a little piece of it in particular that um, I want to just demonstrate for you how to keep it interesting. And you can do this with any song, slow, fast, doesn't matter. But if you find yourself kind of coming back around to a melody, you want to know how to play it differently each time. Here's just an idea, um, some concepts. So the melody does this. So it comes down in this G note and it just plays it several times in a row. And I found myself having to do that three or four times throughout the solo, what do I do there? Well, the first time I can just play it like it sounds. What might you do the second time you come around to make it more interesting? You have any ideas? One thing you can do is take those half notes that we're playing there and turn them into quarter notes. Or turn them into eighth notes. Or you could put like a syncopated rhythm with it where you don't play every possible eighth note, turn it more into a shuffle pattern. I think that sounds pretty cool. That's what I ended up doing. Uh, what could you do beyond that? Well, we have other strings on the mandolin, don't we? So even though this is the melody note, we have other strings around it that might sound good played together. In fact, since that's a G note, I think, well, I've got a G string down here. So I could play that G string at the same time, thicken it up a little bit. It might sound like this. So the same little shuffle pattern, but now I'm playing more than one string. Now, what if... It wasn't a G note. What if it was something else? Well, you could find a harmony note that goes with that. So, uh, for instance, above it, on this A string, we have a, a note on the second fret that's a great harmony note. So, I could do this. That sounds good too, doesn't it? Okay, so now, you know, we've gotten away from just this boring or straight ahead, um, pretty slow half note melody, and we're turning it into something a little bit more interesting. We can also, for the final step, add a little movement to it. So let's take our shuffle pattern, let's take our multiple strings, and uh, let's add some movement to it. So um, instead of just playing the open G string, we can begin to walk on that a little bit. Maybe walk up to another note that would sound like a, that would be a great harmony note. For instance, this fourth fret here is a harmony note to that note. So how do I go from there to there? Well, I could just play it. That sounds pretty cool. Or I could walk up the scale. Now, all of a sudden, that got a lot more interesting to me because there's more going on, right? The harmony is moving on it. And that's just a quick example of how we can take a very sparse, slow melody and just think about some different steps to take it from that stage to something that's more interesting. And Though you may not play Grand Old Flag, there's going to be times where you have those kinds of melodies that you're wanting to preserve. And you can just think about playing them the way that we did here. Mess with the rhythm a little bit, add in some extra strings, and maybe find some other notes that harmonize with it and let the harmony move a little bit even as the melody stays put. I'd love to have you as a member over at BanjoBenClark.com. We teach stuff like, or we, I teach stuff like this all the time on banjo, mandolin, and guitar. I'd love to have you as a Gold Pick member. I have over 700 lessons now. Come over there and join me.